Hey guys, welcome back to Hendrickson Family Farm. Today we're going to be putting the M&W 1500 baler back together. I didn't take a whole lot of videos of taking it apart. I was in a hurry and then it ended up going down a huge rabbit hole of all the other parts that I needed. So I thought it was just going to be a real quick thing. Um, but I'll take you to, along with me as I put it all back together. Uh, like I said in the one of the previous videos I'll try to link it in the description below um, I did put those two rollers in I didn't film that either because I thought I was gonna get that hurried up and done and go get some stuff bailed but it didn't work out but so today we just got to put the sprockets and stuff back on put some more bolts on the uh, put some more bolts on the spindle here we got to put a sprocket back on here put some more bolts in that as well get the chains all run back on there try to get the pickup all put back on and then we will be done with that and then we'll be done with that so uh like i said just we'll get that done real quick well not real quick it'll be real quick for you guys but it'll be it'll be a little bit for me I went and got some new bolts for this that way because uh, these other ones when I took them off they were kind of they were kind of locking up I won't necessarily throw them away living on the farm you never know when you need a bolt so um, I'll throw it in the toolbox but I'm gonna go ahead and replace these bolts right now So it's the same thing when you're putting these in. Try to use a little bit of anisees on them. It just keeps them from golden up whenever you... Uh... Dog. So when you put... I'm not putting the lock washers on there first. I'm putting them on there second. And the reason why I'm putting them on there second is because I got to draw this race housing up into it. One thing about anisees, it gets everywhere. I know it seems like a lot of extra work, but to get those races to pop in there like that, you have to uh, you have to be able to smash it together, and that you can't get a longer bolt in there just to try to pull them in there because you need the clearance for uh, your sprocket on here, which you'll see in just a second. And now, since we got that on there, got it locked into place, we gotta put this lock collar on. But I'll, let me show you something here on this, the shaft. You see that big old ding right there? You see this hammer right here? Someone may or may not have smashed that shaft a little bit with this hammer. I'm not going to say my wife's name or anything, but that's who I would lean towards. It's kind of my fault. I did tell her to hit it, but... I didn't do that. <laughs> yes, you did when I told you to hit that. You. It was already like that. Oh, okay. Well, babe, will you look at that and see if it's lined up? That was like that. So how we're going to fix that so we can get it to go on there? is we're going to use a tiger disc or zip di or not a zip disc but it's the sandpaper disc you can just pick those up at like any of your a lot of your farm stores they carry them any welding supply place they carry them but one thing that 
I want to say is, guys, it's important to wear safety glasses. Um, I try to do it all the time. Anytime I'm working on anything that can throw sparks or throw throw metal or weed eating, it's really important because you only have one set of eyes. You're not gonna, they don't grow back. Um, that's something that was in pretty well beaten to my head as soon as I started working. Uh, so I try to do it all the time. You can go back and look at almost every one of my videos where I'm working on something. I always have safety glasses on. So we'll get this uh, cleaned up here and um, get that collar put on. So another thing you can do uh, to make sure that you're grinding it pretty square is you can get a, a little something with a good straight edge. Um, this is what I typically use. Um, you can just pick these up at Lowe's, your, any of your welding supply stores, they have them too. Uh, I think that's where I got this one at, was at one of the, the welding supply stores. But you just set it on there, and you're wanting to look for you wanting to look down through there and make sure you're not seeing a gap. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a gap right here. Well, let me hold it on there straight. Um, there's a gap. There's a, you can see that gap right there. It tells me that this side's still a little high. And then you just work your way around and you find, you find your, uh, you find your high spots. So we'll just kind of spin it around here and we'll look at it. So you see that right there, that one, that side right there is really good. That side, that part right there of the shaft's good. So we know we don't need to come down there. But that part right there, it still needs some work, but that's, I think that's where we were at a second ago. Still needs a little bit of work. But anytime you hit the end of that shaft, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, mushroom it out. So, but we'll just get back to work here. We're trying to get it taken care of. It, it's not it's not it's not great but it's not a horrible horribly bad that's why I went ahead and uh, we're doing it this way otherwise I would have to take it into a machine shop and they'd have to um, put it on the, the lathe and turn it down I say take it into a machine shop. Where I work at, um, doing what I do, uh, you're able to take, um, used to, I don't know if, the, I, I don't know, I, had, I don't take anything up there because Jen, I have most of the tools that I need to do any job I need to do. If not, I know a couple people that own a machine shop, I would just be able to take it in there and uh, check it up in the lathe and spin that in down. Um, but. There's a, there's a lot of perks to where you work at, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. It, you know, yeah, you might not make 
$20 an hour, you might make $18 an hour, but you have a whole lot of perks at your job. Um, that's like when I worked at the rental store. I loved working at the rental store because I could take any piece of equipment. I just had to bring it back full of fuel. Um, not all rental stores work that way. Um, but a lot of them do. I mean, and this isn't, this isn't precise here, but it'll get us in the ballpark. And, and one thing about farming, you gotta fix it with what you got, because if I went and bought a new shaft like that, it could be anywhere from, you know, a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars. And I can't make any money doing that. So that's why a lot of farmers, you see farmers fixing stuff the way that I'm doing right here. It's just, it's just too bloody expensive to buy new parts all the time. I'm not gonna put the set screw in there because I still need to put the um, sprocket on there. The reason why I, I wanna, the sprocket was flush with the end of the shaft. So, and then this, there was not no gap, in, there was no gap in between them. So I get the sprocket on there and get it mounted where I need to, and then I can come back and I can tighten that down. Um, That's what the pickup pivots on. So we'll take some emery cloth, and now that we got this, the shaft pretty straight, that's why the lock collars, you see me tapping it on there, it's because it's the exact same size as the shaft, it's not, there's not hardly any, um, it's not bigger like it, what typical lock collars are, usually they just slide right on, it, they were, it was tough coming off too. You take this emery cloth and you can polish that shaft up. Knock that rust off. Knock your knuckles on the bolts back there too. And you don't want to use the grinder for this because you just take off way too much material. And like I say, we're just, just trying to get the the rust taken off of it, and that's it. And then we'll take the we'll take the sprocket, and then we'll just we'll just kind of work it through there too, uh, just to get it cleaned up a little bit. It don't have to be perfect, but. Because if you take too much off, it's going to be too loose, and then that lock collar or the 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 set screw on it isn't going to hold it real good. So you just want to you just want to knock the rust off. That's it. I 
And then before you put that on there, we'll put some of our NSEs on there. Like I said, I don't ever plan on taking it back apart. Um, but if I have to, I want to make sure I can get it apart. And you can tell that whoever did it the last time definitely did not put any NICs on anything. little trick to get to make everything set a little easier is you set your your key your key wave you set it out a little bit from your shaft then you can set your sprocket or whatever you're putting on you can set it right on that key and then you know that it's lined up So for you guys that don't know, this is a crow's foot and it's meant to go on a ratchet. So for hard to reach places, you can set it up there. And that's one thing nice about this one is I can, I can turn that sucker like that and get it in there. You see that bolt head right there. I got this right here hooked into there so I can tighten the bolt up. Sometimes when you just can't reach it with a regular Allen wrench, you have to go get the socket head. It. Make our way over here to the other side and get to do the same pulley system right down there. You always wanna get some blocks underneath to something. That's the last thing I want it to do is follow on me. Uh, we just gotta get these bolts put, put in mashed up there and then tighten the lock collar down that's what i was talking about that sucker's that sucker's tight it was like that way when i took it apart we're gonna go ahead and set that down on there i just don't like it have being up in the air just take some of the weight the, take all the weight off of it and let the nose do it so it don't get tippy on you these ones that's right because there's a this is chain driven inside of there this one was all this way. Oh, Colt. He's a he's a good old dog. He's about I want to say Colt. I think he's like 12. We had a black lab. Uh, he actually just passed away um, in the spring. Um, he was 14 years old. He was a. Uh, He was my, my wife and I's first dog. And man, he was a good dog. You couldn't ask for a better one, that's for sure. What kind of music do you guys listen to? Drop it in the comments below. Just kind of curious. Right now I'm listening to a little 
little Brooks and Dunn in my ear. You can hey, sell these nuts and bolts at the mill here in uh, the, the Stillwater Milling Company in Stillwater. You buy them by the pound. It's a whole lot cheaper than going to the uh, parts store and buying them because then you got to buy them by the bolt. And they want to charge you an arm and a leg for them. Some mountain music. Little Alabama right there. I better stick to being a mechanic, not a and a farmer, not a singer. Move you guys back just a, a scotch. So I'll show you what I'm talking about on these lock collars and locking them in. It doesn't matter which way you go. They'll lock either way. We're going to wait to put that on there all the way until we get the pickup put on there. Well guys, that's gonna be it for today. Uh, I'll film some more uh, over the Friday. Friday I'm off, I get off in the morning and I usually stay up all day and that'll probably be the day that I finish the M&W baler. Um, all we have left is putting the pickup on. I, I did take the tire, uh, I did take the tire off of this side, which that's not a big deal. I mean, tires are tires. The biggest thing is uh, getting a pickup put up on on those little pieces right here and they bolt right there so I'm gonna have to get a come along and pull it up you know pull it up to get those bolts put on there and then really that's all there is left is just to get the pickup put on and uh, that's probably gonna take a couple hours just by itself just because it's a um, just because it is a pain um, I have had that off once or twice before, but we'll get that put on there. And uh, I appreciate you guys coming along. Uh, go down, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. And we do have previous videos, so go back and check out some of our old videos. There might be something on there that you want uh, to look to watch. Um, there's all kinds of stuff on there that we do here at the farm and off the farm. Because this is not just a farming vlog, it's uh, what we do as a family and the farm mainly the farm